Everybody, it's Tyler here at FitDell, checking team number 3005, RoboChargers. Uh, absolutely phenomenal performance so far. I just watched one of your matches. You had an incredible score with that, scoring all over the place. Currently number one seed. Uh, by the way, as we uh, record this, you got to take a look at this robot. An absolutely incredible uh, intake and arm structures to go through. I absolutely love everything that's gone in this robot. Just watching this robot cycle uh, over and over again, it has done so well. By the way, joining me to talk more about this robot, I have Adrian, Jonathan, and hey, Zeus and this robot here, uh, just so great. I can't wait to talk more about RoboChargers. Let's learn more about them here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SolidWorks.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charge Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash first updates now. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash first updates now. Starting on your robot here, let's talk a little bit about design and how you came up with this uh, structure here. Uh, I've actually heard from other teams that are looking at utilizing uh, your intake on their robot in the future. So obviously a lot of inspiration from RoboChargers. Talk to me about what's gone into that and a little bit on your swerve as well. Okay, so from after kickoff, we met as a team. We decided uh, what should be the goals of our team on a high level, right? So um, one of our goals was to be very light, fast, uh, pick up a uh, cone in any orientation and uh, score both high and mid. Sure. Um, so that was our overarching goals. Um, so to talk about our arm a little bit, or to talk about the design in general, um, it's kind of like a pink arm. Okay. Um, a, a pivoting, telescoping arm. Uh, something really cool about, uh, something that I think is really cool, is this tensioner right here. So um, we didn't know the precise amount of tension we would need uh, to tension this belt. Uh, so we had like, uh, I forgot what it's called, it's, it's a pattern, I forgot what it's called. But it, it, you can like change the, the holes and it will change the tension slightly. Sure. And so we can uh, change the tension wherever where we need. We didn't know the precise, so we made an estimate of what we needed. Have you had to do that yet here at competition? Uh, no. Uh, we, once, we, um, put it, once we put it on, uh, we found the right tension and it's been the same. Yeah, no, it's cool to have that versatility for it. Something I got to ask you uh, from approaching uh, this game when you're looking at it, uh, was this the first kind of design you went with right away or what were maybe some other uh, prior thoughts to how to approach uh, Charge It Up? So uh, at the beginning we had really had uh, two main concepts we were going with, the, the pink arm basically um, and a uh, elevator that is uh, slanted with an sure. extending arm at the end. Yeah, like a cascading type of elevator, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but we chose this one because this is lighter and we believe it will be faster. Makes sense. Uh, talk to me a little about uh, your sword drive and what you're using for this year. Um, so funny thing about these swerve modules is that they're, they're the uh, max swerve modules, but um, they're actually inspired by our swerve modules from last year, our custom ones that we had. Sure. Um, and the code name, on the swerve modules are rev-21-2005. <laughs> awesome. So you're saying like the, the rev max swerve modules were actually inspired by 3005 last year. Yes. That's really cool. Uh, when, when you're looking at, you know, now based on that, I mean, there are hundreds of teams that are potentially using your inspired swerve drive. How does that make you feel as a team? It, you know, we put a lot of development work into the swerve modules and it, it just makes me uh, happy in a way yeah. to see that we, our work, can be shared with so many people. Uh, and see inspiration in first, right? Like that's a cool thing you can get out uh, and inspire other teams to do that as well. Let's start talking about more of the superstructure of this robot here. Jonathan, uh, talk to me a little about uh, what's gone into uh, your, your arm area uh, as you go up. Uh, you mentioned you had a couple different designs and what you're looking at doing. So I'd love to hear more about how you came up uh, with this type of structure and how it's been working out for you. Okay, so uh, first it starts off with the telescope. Uh, the telescope is fully articulated. It gives us 180 degree, uh, 180 degree range of motion. Uh, so it moves, uh, it can score both high and mid and pick up, oh, and it picks up um, any any game piece in any orientation. If it's laying flat or if it's uh, standing up, it picks it up. It gives us any range of motion too. And then uh, what's also cool about this is that we can also pick up cones from, from the front and from the back too. And uh, what's also cool about this is our uh, 
a A-frame structure, which is slightly off center from the base, but with uh, to give it like a little bit more balance. And these, uh, um, what I call them, like uh, strings, I guess, like uh, cables, cables, yeah. muffle, uh, cables. So if the robot's going forward, the tension comes in the back, so the robot doesn't like move forward. Like this doesn't get like. Wobble yeah, that. totally. Yeah. That's yeah. that's really cool. When you um, mm -hmm. like, what made you come up with that point of utilizing that cables and that sort of tension? Like, did you already build it and then determine that, or was that already determined ahead of time? Well, uh, we like how Adrian said we try to make the robot as light as possible. Like, we gathered as a team, and yeah. one of our main goals was to make it fast and light as possible. And uh, these cables, they provide, uh, they provided just that. And then also, what's cool about this is that these LED lights, uh, they change colors. So for our human player to know what game piece to to handle out so if uh you want so right here it's on cone mode yep and if it changes it all, uh, so it changes to so it signals our human player to give us a cue and then it also changes mode two if you want you can go to to home and uh, right now and then it changes to that so what when it changes color it also changes mode from the intake and this uh and this intake right here gives us a, a 360 degree range of motion allowing us to pick up any any game piece in any orientation well, let's talk more about your intake, Jesus. I want to hear more about uh, this. I think it's really the big showpiece I've seen uh, out in the field as well, too. Uh, I mean, just all that articulation you're getting out of it uh, from the wrist, but then the intake itself, uh, really just picking stuff up off the ground with total ease and pretty much any orientation. So talk more about uh, the design and structure of it and kind of the how you uh, ended up coming up with this concept moving forward. Yes, as you said, this is full, uh, almost a fully articulating wrist. And so this is the 11th generation that we have, 11th wow. version of it. So we've gone through multiple different design phases. Each one was very different. Our main goal was to focus on being able to pick up both cones and cubes. So that's why there's a cage structure underneath right here. That is for the cone, um, for the cubes, where we intake them and we can hold them in place. Our cones, we're able to take them off the ground if they're on their side but we can also rotate the wrist so that way we can pick them up vertically as well. Can we see what a couple of those modes look like again? Yes, this right here is gonna be cube intake, and then we're gonna do cone intake. It's wrong. And that is for picking up cones that are vertically orientated. From uh, some of the uh, different like wheels and different ways that you're gripping on here, uh, we've seen some teams where everything just kind of comes through one conduit for the team. You guys have the, the two for it. Uh, when you were testing out, uh, how did this end up being the best solution for RoboChargers? The way it became the best solution is by, as you said, testing. Our, our goal was to get two, be able to pick up both pieces. And so we would orientate most of our focus on a certain one of the intakes. For example, this one, while we had 11 iterations of the cone intake, this cube intake is only the fourth generation of it. And so our prioritization depended on what we deemed was most necessary, and we thought that um, cones were the most necessary parts that we needed, as other teams may not be able to pick them up as efficiently, and that was what our goal is. That's what we drove its to. Well, RoboCharge, you've been absolutely rocking it here so far from what I've seen. Uh, it, like it says, record this, you're in the number one seat, so we can't wait to see how you perform here uh, in Dallas and, of course, uh, beyond as well, too. You had a great season last year, but I'm going to be honest with you, I think even more is going to be coming out of this year, so I can't wait to see how that happens. So good luck here and the rest of the season as well. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge-up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.